Welcome to the beautiful cathedral of Santa Eulalia. This cathedral, located in the heart of Barcelona's Gothic district, is also known as La Seu Catedral, based on its location in front of Plaza de la Seu. While Antonio Gaudí's La Sagrada Familia may be Barcelona's most famous landmark, and rightfully so, the Santa Eulalia still holds its own as the most impressive cathedral in Spain. I'm sure you can see why. The site of the cathedral has long been a place of worship, as the first basilica was built as early as during the Roman occupation in 343 AD. This basilica was later burned and destroyed during a Moor invasion, but it didn't take long until a cathedral was built in its place. The construction of the cathedral that you have in front of you today started in the late 13th century when the existing cathedral was demolished. The old cathedral included a chapel known as the Capella de Santa Lucia, which was actually saved and incorporated into the cathedral of today. Due to civil wars and the Black Death, which hit the city several times, the construction of the cathedral progressed rather slowly. The main building wasn't completed until 160 years later. The massive facade ahead of you was finished much later, in 1889, and the last part, the 70 meter high central spire, was completed as late as in 1913. Even though some parts of the cathedral were built rather recently, the design of both the façade and the spire were based on the original cathedral design. The cathedral is built as a typical Gothic cathedral. The most evident part of this is the magnificent façade. If you take a look at it, you will see that its spires, pinnacles and arches are all pointing upwards. This typical Gothic feature was a way of trying to reach up to heaven and connect the cathedral with God. The cathedral's main entrance is dominated by a statue of Jesus surrounded by the Apostles. While the exterior of the cathedral is absolutely beautiful, the same is very much true for the interior. The interior consists of one wide nave with more than 20 side chapels, each one dedicated to a specific saint or a Catholic event. One of the more well-known chapels can be found to your right, just as you enter the cathedral. It is known as Capella de San Crist de Lepan and depicts the figure of Christ crucified. The statue was taken aboard on one of the Christian galleys who fought in the Sea Battle of Lapanto in 1571. When you look at the statue, you will see that Jesus has a rather strange tilting pose. The legend has it that this pose was created when the figure of Christ shifted slightly to the right during the battle to dodge an incoming cannibal. The cathedral has gotten its name for the co-patron saint of Barcelona, Santa Eulalia. According to the Catholic tradition, Eulalia was a young virgin who suffered martyrdom during Roman times in Barcelona. She was killed at the age of 13 for refusing to dismiss Jesus as the Son of God. In front of the altar, you will find stairs leading down to the cathedral crypt. Inside this crypt, you can actually see the beautiful sarcophagus of Eulalia. The cathedral is adjacent to a 14th century cloister, which is what many people rate as the best part of the cathedral visit. The charming cloister courtyard is a lush garden where you can find different types of trees and a small statue of a mounted Saint George, the other patron saint of Barcelona. 
you can also find a small mossy pond known as the Well of the Geese. The name originates from the fact that it houses a flock of white geese whose ancestors have been living in the courtyard ever since its creation. The flock consists of 13 geese, each one representing a year in Santa Eulalia's short life. The courtyard has, quite fittingly, been called the loveliest oasis in Barcelona, and I'm sure you'll like it as well. What some people don't know is that it's possible to take a lift up to the roof of the cathedral. Up there, special made walkways allow you to wander around while at the same time enjoying a great view over Gothic Barcelona. 